what I'm reading is Zora Neale Hurston's new release, Barracoon, the story of the last black cargo. Most of us know Zora Neale Hurston from Their Eyes Were Watching God, and we know of her as an African-American woman author. What I didn't know is that she's an anthropologist, and that was neat as a fellow social scientist to hear about how she went about interviewing um, this man who is known as Cujo Lewis, but his African name is Kosolo. I read this book because I couldn't pass up the opportunity to hear firsthand from someone who remembers being taken across the Middle Passage, remembers his time on the continent, lived through slavery, emancipation, reconstruction, or not, um, Jim Crow, World War I, depression. He had such a span uh, of life that I felt like I wanted to read this book. So this book is all about the life of Oluwale Kosolo, and he was born in a part of West Africa that is thought to be Benin. He is Yoruba and actually part of a subgroup of the Yoruba folks, the Isha folks. And he was taken from his home, from his village at the age of 19 uh, by the Domini people. And they were known to like conquest and raid different villages and, and, and tribes to get people to fuel the slave trade. So even though it had been illegal for over 50 some years, this, this trade was still happening. And so Kosola remembers the morning waking up when they raided his, his village, when he was separated from his family, he tried to escape. He remembers walking from his village to the barracoons, which were like the stockades and where he was kept. He remembers the Middle Passage and being on the Clotilda, which was the last known slave ship. So this ship was, was built specifically to go get this cargo um, and be able to maneuver around the law enforcement of the seas because it was illegal. So this is a famous ship that was actually burned when it came back to the United States to try to cover up the evidence. Uh, but he remembers all of that. And what I think is amazing about the book is that it's as much of a story about his life outside of enslavement than it is about the story of being enslaved. And to me, that's a beautiful reminder that the enslavement of black people interrupted our history. It doesn't define it. It is, it is not the sum of our existence. It was a tragic moment and a tragic era, and we we're still feeling ripple effects, but that there was a story before. And so his reminiscing about his life and the rituals and the initiation that he had towards manhood, uh, it, was, it made me feel eager to tell my children stories about their family, to pass that on, and also eager to listen to my elders, to sit down and hear the stories from my grandparents and uh, to have my children make sure they talk to their great-grandparents so that they know the stories of their families because it was beautiful to hear him uh, tell some of the parables and stories that he knew from his childhood and you could, you could feel that he always longed for his home. In fact, he was in the United States and enslaved for five years and then emancipation comes. And he and some other people who were enslaved who were on the Clotilda, the ship, they tried to get back. And I, I thought about it, it's like, it's almost like the length of time that people spend in college nowadays. Like you would want to go back home, right? You're not necessarily ready to settle somewhere else. I mean, it's totally not like college, but this idea that it's a span of time that would be reasonable that they want to try to get back home and it was too expensive. They couldn't raise the money to get back home. So they decided to create Africa town, which is a small settlement outside of Mobile, Alabama, where many of the people who were enslaved and came over on that same ship, settled and made a community. One of the things that hit home for me in this book was how he was very much in this middle space, right? Like he can remember, he was 19 when he came from the continent. And so here in the United States, there were black Americans who'd been here for generations. And so he and his family were, 
were taunted and teased and called savages and ignorant and like all of the negative assumptions that people have about African people. So he didn't really have a home in either place. So Africatown was, was home to Casolo and he made his home there, raised his family, lost his family. And it's a really beautiful and tragic story. So a few things that this book made me think about. It made me think about our unwillingness to listen to people's stories as they are and our desire to kind of shape them or censor them because Zora Neale Hurston tried to get this published as is back in the 30s, but Viking Press said, no, we, we want you to take out the dialect, we want you to kind of sanitize it and make it more accessible. And she refused to do so, and I'm, I'm glad she did because we get to hear in his own words, in his own dialect, his story, and I think at the least he deserves that. This book also reminded me of Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe, which takes us through a beautiful story of life in the village and ends with the appearance of the white man. And in a way, kind of you know what comes after that, but you don't get to read it in the book. And, and this is the story of, kind of what happens after that. Not explicitly, but it made me think about that book and also Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl by Harriet Jacobs. And that book was one that opened my eyes during college because it's a firsthand account of someone who's a fugitive slave talking about her experience. As I was reading this book, I was thinking about all the other stories and narratives that I've read that give voice to the experience that is unthinkable, right? Um, and it also made me think about whose stories do we need to be hearing today? Whose stories do we need to be capturing? Zora Neale Hurston took a number of trips down to see Kosolo and to talk to him and, and some days he didn't feel like talking and some days he was quite talkative. So this was, this was an exercise, not just in asking people to tell their stories and leaving, it was a relationship. Um, and it made me think about in my life, who do I need to be sitting down with, being in a relationship with and hearing their story. So there's a quote from the book that I wanna read. And it says, all these words from the seller, but not one from the sold. The kings and captains whose words move ships, but not one word from the cargo. The thoughts of the black ivory, the coin of Africa, had no market value. Africa's ambassadors to the new world have come and worked and died and left their spore, but no recorded thought. So this is a beautiful piece of recorded thought. I hope you enjoy it and let me know what you think about Bear Coon in the comments. All right, Dr. Banks, that's a wrap, and... It's a wrap. It's a wrap. And cut.